Welcome to the Memorial Day weekend edition of Forecast Lab. We're going to be on a normal schedule, and I'll be here on Monday for the supporters. Looking pretty good across much of the country, a bit cold and wet in the northeast. Some good weather across the western states, though a bit hot in the deserts, with temperatures well into the 100s. Parts of the central plains will be contending with rounds of rain, storms, and possibly some severe weather. Looks like the deck is stacked against Tulsa and much of eastern Oklahoma over the next few days. Fortunately, no major tornado threat is expected. The patterns resemble summer more than they do spring. And let us examine that pattern in detail. We've got cold polar air coming out of Canada. Not just the cold temperatures, 40s in the Great Lakes, 50s and 60s down south, but also the dry dew points, dew points down in the 30s and 40s. You contrast that with the Gulf, dew points in the 60s and 70s. Dew point is actually a more reliable tracer of air mass source region than temperature. It's a lot easier to modify the temperature, not so much the moisture. So when you have dry air showing up in places like the southwest deserts, that's a sign that the air mass is originating from the mid or upper levels of the troposphere or from a northerly latitude. In the northeastern U.S., a very unsettled weather pattern. This has been going on for a few days, and we've had heavy rain in Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts. Here's a map of the observed totals, some amounts up to 7 inches, around Plymouth, Kingston, and Duxbury, widespread 2 to 3 inch amounts elsewhere, and today another area of rain moving in from the west across New York. Yesterday was also one of the coldest afternoons on record for parts of the northeast. Portland, Maine only reached 49, breaking the record for the date. Concord, New Hampshire, 47, the New York City area, Central Park, 51, Newark, LaGuardia, 53. And those were all records for the date. Anyway, a cold afternoon across the Northeast once again, highs in the 40s and 50s. And if we pull up the 500 millibar overlay, we see cold core lows across northern New England and southern Ontario. To the south, in this strong northwesterly flow, we have cold advection across Pennsylvania, Ohio, and West Virginia. And due to this strong northwesterly flow, we have beach hazard statements for eastern and southern Lake Erie, Buffalo, Cleveland, Sandusky. High risk of rip currents due to strong westerly flow along the beaches. And as you go further west into the Great Lakes, frost advisory in northern Wisconsin and northeastern Minnesota for tonight. Temperatures into the lower 30s. Across the southeastern states, a wide variation of temperatures, 60s and 70s from Kentucky up into West Virginia to 90s in Florida and southern Georgia. The hottest readings were around Jacksonville and Tallahassee, both of those expecting 95 this afternoon. The pattern of strong afternoon storms in southern Florida continues. A marginal risk for the southeast coast from Miami to Vero Beach could be some strong winds in some of those storms. And let's take a look at the radar. A couple of strong storms moving into the Fort Lauderdale and Miami area at this hour and a spectacular outflow boundary to the south and to the west. This storm here around Fort Lauderdale does have a severe thunderstorm warning on it and another isolated cell further north around Okeechobee. And that's drifting to the southeast with a severe warning on it as well. In the southern plains, quiet except in West Texas, but looks can be deceiving. Early this morning before dawn, we saw some strong storms move through the San Antonio and San Marcos area. Those brought very gusty winds and quite a bit of lightning. The storms also produced some small hail. The heat returned to Texas today where we saw widespread 90s. 100s returned to the Del Rio area and the Pecos Valley around Wink. El Paso was expecting 99. They did reach 100 yesterday, setting their first triple-digit heat of the year. 
The Storm Prediction Center has a slight risk of severe thunderstorms along the Texas Cap Rock and in much of southern Kansas and northern Oklahoma. And we'll draw that on for you. And you can see that area right there. That's got the classic look of a warm front and dry line set up. So let's take a look at the surface map. And that's pretty much what we have. Warm front through Oklahoma into southwest Kansas. And the dry line from a triple point near Burlington, Lyman, south into west Texas. That slight risk area does extend into western Nebraska. This is a favorable upslope flow pattern. You can see these cells developing along the front range and moving into the high plains of western Nebraska and northeastern Colorado. We do have a chance for a few supercells and maybe even some tornadoes in far northeast Colorado around Sterling and Ray this afternoon. Further north, it gets much colder Highs were in the 50s all day in western and central North Dakota, and they will fall into the mid-40s for tonight. But the temperatures will be dropping even further in Minnesota and Wisconsin down into the low 30s, thus that frost advisory. Across the southwestern U.S., clear to partly cloudy skies and a lot of heat, Phoenix up to 104. 102 at Yuma and 97 at Las Vegas. The current observations reflecting those hot temperatures 102 at the Sour at Phoenix and 104 at Blythe, California. It is rather warm in the Mojave Desert, but gets much colder in the San Joaquin Valley. Typically, when we have highs in the 100s and upper 90s in the southwest deserts, we're looking for around 90 to 95 in the San Joaquin Valley. So this is much different. This reflects an air mass change, cooler air coming in from the Pacific, highly modified. And there again, you can see the cooler dew point temperatures down into the 40s and 30s in the San Joaquin Valley and much lower into the teens and single digits in Nevada. I might as well give you that 500 millibar overlay and we can see progressive westerly flow, especially across Nevada and Utah and the subtropical ridge lurking just to the south in Old Mexico. And as we go into summer, we're going to see even more of that ridge moving into the Four Corners area, Arizona, maybe Colorado and Texas. And at times we may even see a closed upper level high. And typically that's something we see during a heat wave pattern. Let's take a look at the northwestern U.S. using the same graphics. And there we see troughing off of the British Columbia coast. Not really wide enough to see all the detail, but we do see westerly flow pouring right into Washington and Oregon. Not really a whole lot to talk about this afternoon. Mild conditions, no significant weather to speak of. Temperatures were in the mid-60s in the Seattle area, low 70s around Portland, and the mid-70s from the Columbia River Basin to the desert interior of Idaho and Nevada. And then we head into the Pacific, and it is a little bit stormy there in the Gulf of Alaska. This is probably tracking into British Columbia. We're getting some rain across southeastern Alaska into the Prince Rupert area and almost to Vancouver Island. And temperatures coming up to near seasonal normals. In Canada itself, yeah, cold weather continues in the high Arctic down south, though, rather mild, 70s and 60s in the prairies. Wildfire smoke problems continue in northeastern Saskatchewan. Similar problems in Manitoba all around Winnipeg and the southeastern province. Almost 1,000 people were evacuated last week from wildfires near the rural municipality of Lake Dubani, about 50 miles northeast of Winnipeg. Dozens of homes destroyed there. There's still a lot of smoke circulating, and this is a graphic showing that some of that smoke may end up in North Dakota and Minnesota over the next day or so. Some inclement conditions approaching the Maritimes, wind warnings in effect for far northern Nova Scotia, southwest Newfoundland. We could see gusts up to 60 miles an hour through tomorrow morning as this low pulls to the northeast. Okay, let's see what's in the cards for the next week or so. 
a, a mega block showing up there in Canada. A couple of lows, one across the northeastern U.S., the other in the Gulf of Alaska, and this pinched upper air ridge. This is the 500 millibar heights and winds chart. So let's see if that breaks down. That is a blocking pattern, and it kind of connects into the western U.S. as well. So over the next couple of days, we're going to see a very similar picture, very slow evolution into Monday and Tuesday, and finally, looks like that breaks down. Still a little bit of blocking there. Where did that low come from? Let's go back. Yeah, that kind of, that's a little lobe of that vortex across eastern Canada. So, yeah, that comes together across the northern plains on Wednesday. And that's still a little bit blocky. See that right there, low south of a high pressure area. Let's take a look at the 850 millibar forecast. And this adds moisture. These green lines here, those are mixing ratio in grams per kilogram. That probably sounds a bit complicated, but values of 4 to 8, those are dew points around 40s and maybe 50s. And as you get up into the 12s, that is getting well up into the 60s. So that gives you a rough idea of where the moisture axis is located. For this afternoon, focused right in here, there's 12 so that's going to be richer dew points up there at about 5,000 feet MSL. And you can see that over the next day or so, you can just kind of focus on your favorite area. A little frontal ripple right through there. The moisture axis intersects the boundary north of Ponca City, Oklahoma, right around Wichita. So all this area here could be a focus for convection. Then we go on a Sunday. There's how things look late in the evening. So a little cold front right there, warm front, pretty much the same area, and 12 grams per kilogram right over that warm front. So continued stormy in Oklahoma and Kansas. Then for Monday, kind of a similar setup. Maybe the front's uh, kind of like that right there. 12s still across Oklahoma, so still rich moisture. And then we see the boundaries kind of wash out for Tuesday, but still upslope flow in the high plains. Then for Wednesday, that's going to be Wednesday evening, we have cyclogenesis again in southwestern Kansas, 12s down to the south, maybe 10s a little bit further north. Then we go into Thursday, and we get the strong downslope flow, probably some sort of shortwave ridge moving in and finally we open up this cold advection through the plains northerly flow we drop to the eights and tens and the moisture just kind of clears out so that's going to be may 31st so let's go ahead and put it together and look at our forecast over the next week it is going to be stormy in the ozarks tonight and early tomorrow for Saturday, it's going to be hot in Texas. The peak of hot weather, Austin, San Antonio, up almost to 100 degrees. We are expecting 100 at Midland and Lubbock. A large, slight risk of severe weather from the Cap Rock to Oklahoma City, across much of Oklahoma, into Arkansas and northern Mississippi. It is possible we're going to see a few tornadoes from Childress to Oklahoma City especially near that dry line triple point. Temperatures will be falling in eastern Colorado as that cold air mass works in. Highs will run 76 at Denver, 70 at Colorado Springs, and 63 at Burlington. For Sunday, it is going to be hot across the southeastern U.S., 90s from Jackson to Macon to Jacksonville. Going into midweek, though, we will see things gradually cooling there in Texas, a little bit cooler for Sunday as that cold front comes south. The Storm Prediction Center, once again, they've got a slight risk of severe storms from the Texas Cap Rock into all of Oklahoma due to a risk of supercells with large hail and high winds and a few tornadoes. The tornado risk will be higher in the western portion of that slight risk, especially near that triple point. And wind damage is expected a little bit further to the east. Not everywhere, but wind damage will be the primary concern. It will be cold in Colorado east of the Rockies, things cooling off further, highs in the 50s in the lower plains and 60s in the I-25 corridor. 
the southwest deserts getting a small break in that heat after a very hot weekend. Then going into the work week, it is going to be gradually hotter each day. You can see those big storms back there in western Oklahoma. Then for Monday, the storm activity shifts south along with that cold front. Good chance of storms on the Red River into the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Highs will be lower, 80s around Dallas-Fort Worth, the other big cities. Down in that tropical air, mid-90s for the most part. And let's just go ahead and finish this up. We get this persistent stationary front through the central plains, Oklahoma and Arkansas. So those chances for rain will continue through much of the week. And then finally, by Friday, cold air flowing south and kind of a dry weekend coming up for the first day of June. That concludes our Friday edition of Forecast Lab. Thanks to all of you who are supporting us on Patreon. If you're not a supporter, your job is to subscribe, like, and comment. That's all I ask of you, and it's much appreciated. We'll see you back here on Monday for the supporter edition. And for everybody else, we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Take care and have a great Memorial Day weekend. Bye-bye.